friends, welcome to Solon Public Library's Digital Story Time. I am Miss Cassie, and we are gonna start with our welcome song. And we need to get our clapping hands ready, so we're gonna wiggle our fingers and shake our hands and rub them together really fast, really fast, really fast. And put them on our knees. <laughs> okay, you can sing along, the words are right here. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. All right, what do we do after we clap our hands? That's right, we stomp our feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. What do we do after we stomp our feet? That's right, we twirl around. Here we go. If you want to read a book, twirl around. If you want to read a book, twirl around. Okay, for our last verse, we're going to be as quiet as we can, and we're going to whisper, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray, hooray. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray, hooray. Okay, this is our last April story time. So it's our last story time where we are talking about the weather. So we need to sing our weather song. We're gonna ask what the weather is. We're gonna look outside and the weather could be sunny or it could be rainy or it could be windy. All right, here we go. What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather like today? Is it sunny? Is it rainy? Is it windy out today? Let's sing it again. What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather like today? Is it sunny? Is it rainy? Is it windy out today? What do you think, friends? Take a look outside. What is the weather like? What's the weather today? Even though it is springtime, today we are going to talk about snowy weather. <laughs> So our first book is called Snowflake Bentley, and it's written by Jacqueline Briggs Martin and illustrated by Mary Azarian. So Snowflake Bentley, this book is about the first person to ever take a picture of a snowflake. Let's find out how that happened. In the days when farmers worked with an ox and sled and cut the dark with lantern light, there lived a boy who loved snow more than anything else in the world. Willie Bentley's happiest days were snowstorm days. He watched snowflakes fall on his mittens, on the dried grass of Vermont farm fields, on the dark metal handle of the barn door, he said snow was as beautiful as butterflies or apple blossoms. He could net butterflies and show them to his older brother, Charlie. Look, there he's showing him a monarch butterfly. He could pick apple blossoms and take them to his mother, but he could not share snowflakes because he could not save them. What happens to a snowflake when you catch it in your hand? That's right, it melts and it disappears. How do you think he is going to figure out how to share snowflakes? 
When his mother gave him an old microscope, he used it to look at flowers and raindrops and blades of grass. And best of all, he used it to look at snow. While other children built forts and pelted snowballs at roosting crows, Willie was catching single snowflakes. Day after stormy day, he studied the ice crystals. The intricate patterns were even more beautiful than he imagined. He expected to find whole flakes that were the same, that were copies of each other, but he never did. Willie decided he must find a way to save snowflakes so others could see their wonderful designs too. For three winters, so three whole years, he tried drawing snow crystals, but they always melted before he could finish. That would make it hard to study them, wouldn't it? So one day he found out about a camera and he wanted it more than anything. But his dad thought it was silly to buy him a camera, but he loved his son. So they saved and they saved until they could afford to buy one. The camera was so big. Look at that picture. It's taller than the baby cows. And Willie was sure it was the best camera in the world. But his first pictures weren't any good. But he kept trying. He didn't give up. He worked through every storm. And when it ended, he still didn't have any good pictures. So he waited until next year. And the second winter, he tried something different. And it worked. Willie had figured out how to photograph snowflakes. Now everyone can see the beauty in a tiny crystal, he said. He was so excited to share, but nobody cared. They laughed at him, and they laughed at the whole idea of taking pictures of snow. While the other far farmers sat by the fire or rode to town, Willie studied the snowstorms. He held out a black tray to catch the flakes so he could take their picture. He tried lots of different things. He did so many different uh, pictures and he tried to get them just right. He loved the beauty of nature in all the seasons and he took lots of different kinds of pictures, not just pictures of snowflakes. On fall nights, he would gently tie a grasshopper to a flower so he could find it in the morning and photograph the insect covered in morning dew. But his snow crystal pictures were always his favorite. He gave copies away or sold them for just a few cents. He made special pictures as gifts for birthdays. He held evening slideshows on the lawns of his friends. Children and adults sat on the grass and watched while Willie projected his slides on a sheet hung over a clothesline. Look, there's a snowflake. And now they can see them even when it's warm out. He wrote about snow and published his pictures in magazines. He gave speeches and he began to be known as the snowflake man. But he never grew rich. He spent all of his money on pictures. Scientists started to raise money so that Willie could gather his photographs into a book. When he was 60 years old, Willie's book, His Gift to the World, was published. Still, he was not ready to quit. Less than a month after turning the first page in his own book, Willie walked six miles home in a blizzard to make more pictures. And he fell ill with pneumonia after that walk, and he died two weeks after. A monument was built for Willie in the center of town. The girls and boys who had been his neighbors grew up and told their sons and daughters the story of the man who loved snow. 
40 years after Willie ben Wilson Benson's death, excuse me, Wilson Bentley's death, children in his village worked to set up a museum in honor of the farmer scientist. And his book was taken, uh, and his book has taken the delicate snow crystals that once blew across Vermont, past mountains over the earth. Neighbors and strangers have come to know of the icy wonders that land on their own mittens. Thanks to Snowflake Bentley. And then look, there's a picture of the real man with his giant camera. Ta and here are some of the pictures that he took with that camera. How cool is that? Have you ever wanted to take a picture of a snowflake? I wonder if you could figure out how to do the same thing, just like Snowflake Bentley. Speaking of catching snowflakes on our mittens, we are gonna sing one of my favorite wintertime songs, which is Mitten Weather. <laughs> and it's all about how you put on your mittens. So we're gonna put our thumbs in the thumb place and our fingers all together for our song that we sing in Mitten Weather. So we're gonna sing this song three times. Are you ready? Thumb in the thumb place, fingers all together. This is the song we sing in mitten weather. Thumb in the thumb place, fingers all together. This is the song we sing in mitten weather. Thumb in the thumb place, fingers all together. This is the song we Sing in mitten weather. Yay! I have some mittens here and they are all mixed up. Will you help me match my mittens so that I can put some mittens on and go outside and catch some snowflakes? Will you help me? Oh, thank you. Okay, we have three sets of mittens. So we have some orange mittens with orange dots. We have uh, some pink mittens with a white flower and some green mittens with some little stripes across. So let's see, here we go. This is my first mitten that I want to match. This is my orange mitten with orange dots. Can you find the match to this mitten? Is this mitten a match? No, this mitten is green. Is this mitten a match? No, this mitten is pink. Is this mitten a match? Yes, this mitten is orange with orange dots. These two mittens go together. Good job. All right, let's match this mitten next. This is my pink mitten with a white flower. Let's see, does this mitten match? No, this is a green mitten. Does this mitten match? <laughs> no, this is another green mitten. Does this mitten match? Yes, it does. This mitten is a pink mitten with a white flower. Good job. Okay, I have two mittens left. Let's see. I want to match my green mitten with green stripes. And we have one mitten left. Is this mitten a match? It is. This mitten is also green with green stripes. Thanks for your help. Let's see, which mitten should I wear to go out and catch snowflakes? Should I wear the orange mittens? Or the pink mittens? Or the green mittens? I think I'm gonna go with the green mittens because green is one of my favorite colors. Thanks for your help, friends. Good job. Our last book today, we are going to read The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. Because of course we are, because what other perfect book about a snowy day is there other than The Snowy Day? Here we go. 
One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night, and it covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, 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 his feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. And he walked with his toes pointing in like that. That's a fun, makes a fun pattern, doesn't it? Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. What do you think he found? It was a stick. A stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. He hits the tree and what happens to the snow on the tree? It all falls down. Sure enough, down fell the snow, plop, on top of Peter's head. So he keeps walking. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. Oh, but look, he got hit with a snowball, didn't he? So instead, he made a smiling snowman. Can I see your smiles? Smile big. And he made snow angels. And look, the angels have a little thing on top, just like his snow hat. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great, big, tall, heaping mountain of snow and then slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another and he packed it round and firm and put his snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. Uh-oh, he took a cold snowball and put it in his warm pocket. What do you think is going to happen to that snowball? Hmm. Peter told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought and thought and thought about them. Where is he now? He's in a warm bubble bath. Oh, those are my favorite. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. But his pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. What do you think happened to his snowball? Take a look at his pocket. It looks wet to me. Hmm, what happens to snow when it gets warm? While Peter slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone, and the snow was still falling everywhere. New snow was even falling. Oh, look at those snowflakes, all those different kinds of snowflakes. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall, and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. Do you think they're going to have some adventures together? I think so, too. So you've had some time to think. What do you think happened to his snowball, his cold snowball that he put into his warm pocket? That's right, it melted. Because when snow gets warm, it melts and it becomes water. And that's why his pocket was wet. Good detective work, friends. You knew that, didn't you? Good job. Okay, friends, we have our goodbye song. You can sing along, the words are right here. And you can play your own invisible ukulele if you want while we sing, or you can just sway along with me. Here we go. 
We read a book, then we 